Hello everyone, Jarrell from Sungrand here. This is part three of the series Remastering Silver Falls Ruby River from the 3DS to the Switch. So today I will be working on upgrading our visuals for our bodies of water. So for the 3DS I used the most basic shaders uh, possible because uh, those were the only ones that were compatible. You can see I used the uh, shader, uh, the legacy shaders, transparent vertex lid. Those were really the only ones um, that I could get working on the 3DS to have that sort of transparent look. Very basic. Um, so I prepared this a little bit uh, ahead of time. Let's go ahead and turn this on here. And I need to make adjustments, of course, but I'll be using River Auto material. Um, it's a nature manufacturer that produces that, so I'll have to make some adjustments and whatnot. But you can see we'll, we'll have more uh, realistic uh, water here, so uh, I'll have to just... Um, I can always just try a few options, but um, at the moment it's not super important. I just want to put something in there, you know. Um, but we'll, we'll make adjustments, you know, like uh, for example, I want it to be more transparent and, you know, in a certain way along the edges. So what I actually will do is... Um, I'll just go back to my other project, which is Silver Falls Episode Prelude. Uh, I don't have it open here, uh, but uh, I'll just grab that later. I already set that uh, material up in there to look really good for small ponds like that. So um, for now, I'll just I'll, that'll be just temporary. Um, we'll have that in there just temporarily, and then uh, I'll come back later on and just make it better. So right now, it looks like a deep, deep lake. Um, but let's go ahead and drop that on the river as well on Ruby River itself. But see, we need to do something special. Ruby River is known for its blood red uh, rivers at sunset time. So we'll have to do something about that. Actually, I just want to grab my material here. Which means I'll have to create some logic so I can swap out my uh, materials so I can get them, get them looking. Red Hot. <laughs> red Hot River. Okay. So, for now. And of course I will have to adjust the scaling because the river is actually this long uh, piece here. So we'll work it out. We'll work it out. Okay, so we'll find out our other bodies of water here. Uh, here's another one. And of course we'll fix these up later. So I'll come back later and just make it uh, more transparent and a brighter color. Actually, kind of like, um, kind of like that one for now. Yeah. Um, let's see. This one says. Um, that one's pretty nice, honestly. I might pick that one. But, uh, let's see. Let's see if we put it on here. larger ripples, honestly. So, um, of course, it's. I'm going to adjust it so there aren't really any ripples. It needs to be calm water, you know. So, well, let's try this one. Let's see what that one looks like. Oh, that's not quite right, is it? It looks like it's flowing. Anyway, this is fine for now. What I'll go ahead and do is now just drop them into. What if I had surprised people and just added a couple more bodies of water? What if I added um, just a couple more, you know, just to play with? One up here, and I think, yeah, there's two up here. There we go. Okay, that'll make them easier to find now. Now that, okay. So, see, they disappear, and that's because they have a culling um, system using the LOD system in Unity, uh, and that was to save processing power so that when the player's a certain distance away from them, they won't see them. Um, Alternatively, you could use the level of detail system to just replace them with a much simpler shader. So you don't have the advanced uh, reflections in the lighting. You can replace it with something that's a basic shader so that it'll still be visible from a distance, but it won't have the transparency, which means it won't need all the complex 
uh, calculations so that it won't use up all your processing power. So let's go ahead and find some willow trees since I have designated this biome the willow lake. So we want to generate some willows here. So the way that my scatter system works um, in Ruby Rivers, I use something called the scatter manager. Uh, and it just says, hey, here, here's some flowers. I want you to scatter them in this particular area. And you can determine whether or not you want them to spawn on water. So that's, uh, you put that check mark in there um, if you want it to spawn on water. One thing that I uh, really had fun with when I was developing and testing Ruby River was building houses on the lake, you know, extending out a thing. And, uh, you know, people have enjoyed, um, people still send me photos and they'll, they'll show me really cool things that they've built. So I'm not adding too much in terms of buildables that are just, you know, like in the base um, buildable library, but I'm adding a couple things that'll just mix things up and, and give people more fun things to do so they can enjoy the game for a long time. So I've brought in the willow trees that I've set up from Episode Prelude. At least I thought I did. I thought I copied and pasted them, but perhaps, perhaps I was mistaken. So we'll go ahead and copy and paste those uh, those willow trees in now. Okay, here we go. Control copy, control pasta. All right, and now I will designate uh, that object to uh, have uh, randomly generated around this willow area, so that'll be nice. Um, of course we could use them in other areas uh, of the environment as well, but I want to create specific biomes so that it feels, um, so that there is significantly more variety and it feels more satisfying to build in different locations and to explore different locations because it will make the environment feel more varied and natural. Okay, so this won't take too long. It's it's uh, going to be done in a couple seconds here. Okay, so what I want to do is just grab the willow tree, make sure that it uh, is working properly as it came from an older version, uh, and it looks like I have some shader compilation errors, so let's just see what happens here. I have my prefabs that are optimized. I have tree, willow, to sheep. So I have some um, shader errors. Let's go ahead and see if we can just adjust those now. I might just give these guys the speed tree. Um, so leaves and trunk. I'm going to use um, my speed tree. Uh, let's see if we can get these working all right. And the speed tree shaders are, are very performant and they look fantastic. And these are partic in particular our custom shaders here. We actually have to just click it in and click out. Okay, let's go and do one and two, and we have the cross. What we're going to do is, I think there's a shader in here that says speed tree seven billboard. Okay, now I think what it wants us to do is manually um, bring those in. So let's go ahead and click in there. I'm kind of thinking if we put a tick mark here, it should just come on through. There's a bit of my Australian coming through. I said tick mark instead of check mark, so we'll put the albedo map in there. And we'll put hue variation, and we can always come back and fix these things uh, later on as well. We'll put my normal map in there as well. And we do want to specify, it looks like um, this uh, should be fronts. So see how they're not transparent right now? Um, you can see that they're just the sort of the cards, as it were. So I will go front, and that will allow them to draw the fronts. And I'll be making adjustments because it's, to me, it's extremely important. The way that the light shines through the leaves is something that I pay a significant amount of attention to because it really, it needs to look right and it needs to look good. We'll go ahead and put our Alameda map in there and our variation. Less important on that. You kind of have it in there anyway. Okay, and of course you can adjust the wind settings, which I will come back and do later. And uh, on our lights there, let's go ahead and enable to. So you need specific uh, specific maps. So say for example your mission map. Um, 
just for this it says subsurface. I don't have anything set up for that, so I'm just gonna do so I'm just gonna do a real cheeky cheeky here. I'm just gonna drag and drop my um my albedo map in there. That's real. I'll, I'll fix that later. No, don't worry about that. That's just being cheeky. Okay. So say for example, if I ramp that color right on up, if I ramp that color up, you know, I kind of see like, oh, that's the, the light coming through. You know, but obviously it's taken it too far in some places. So what we'll do is we'll dial that right down again. Go ahead and that until I feel like it's, it's right. That might be a little too much, but that sort of um, gives a sense of light coming. See the light hitting it uh, in the way that I would like it to, so I need to figure out what the situation is uh, with that. So let's see here. I'll check the layer. See, the light isn't hitting it in a way that looks right to me. It's dull the whole way through. I need to understand why. That should be uh, quite shiny. Um, so the leaves are not giving off the right amount of. Specularity. So let me see if we can adjust that now. Uh, I'm going to bring up my uh, normal strength just so I can see what's... Okay, yeah, I like my leaves to have a bit more dimensionality, so they really pop, you know. Okay. Hmm. I mean... I, the, I don't think these have specular maps set up for them. Uh, I may just create some later. Um, okay, so we can see it we can see some effect there. Okay. Alright. These are things that you can adjust like when it's raining, you know, you can make them more shiny um, so that they adjust, but that's a lot a lot of logic going on there. I'm not using um, Unity's uh, terrain and uh, system. For the trees, the trees are all instanced objects that have been created on the spot. So something, something's wrong with the color here that I'm just not quite happy about. Uh, let me go ahead and click on that. Mm, no, I'll have to come back and fix that later. Something about it isn't quite right. You know, the leaves aren't catching light in just the right way. Um, see, that looks totally wrong. It's, it's super shiny. Now, we're going to leave that for now, and I'll come back and fix that later. That's, you know, that's not quite right, but we'll, we'll, we'll get it. We'll get there. So what I want to do is find my scatter manager, uh, and uh, this guy uses a lot of LODs here because it's actually quite, um, it's, he's quite a um, high poly count here, okay? Just create an original prefab. Cheap two. Okay, so I've got my scatter managers here. So uh, let me go ahead and trees one. Okay. So I'm gonna look at my list of my scatter managers for my trees. I want to find the ones that uh, is meant to control this area here. You see, it's trying to transition to the billboard, which hasn't been defined. So I'll fix that in just a second. Let me find my scatter manager for this area. I know that I've got one for this particular area. What I really should do is um, assign them a gizmo icon so they're easy to locate. That's not something that I did on the 3DS because um, I was working such a frenzied uh, schedule that uh, I didn't I didn't have time for things like that. I'm, I'm kind of thinking maybe this is the guy that I use here, this scatter manager. So I'm going to check my south. That doesn't, that doesn't seem right. That doesn't seem right at all. Anyway, you know what I'll do? I'll just, I'll go ahead and I'll just go like this. Oh, I see, I see some here. I see a couple more here. Okay, I got, all right, yeah. All right, so I see three scatter managers for trees here, and they've been disabled, so I'm going to re-enable them. They've been turned off. Okay. So you can see that they are supposed to use the destructible tree, but I want to use the willow that I've just set up. So I've created a prefab. I'm going to click on that. And 
type in willow. Okay, and I want the one that I've just set up. I think it's willow too. Drag and drop it. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. So now, when they run, they will scatter uh, that. Well, they'll put them in this area. So let's see. I can have a maximum of between 30 and 60. That one does between 20 and 50. That one does between 20 and 50. But I actually want some around here as well, around the back. So I'm just going to grab that. I'm going to duplicate it with Control D. I'll bring it around here, and there. Are now we'll generate some willow trees on this end as well. So there's going to be heaps. Heaps. You could have up to 50. Maybe that's too many. Maybe it's too many. Well, those are the kind of things that you determine when you are playing. So I'll just leave it for now and I'll balance it out later. Okay, so let's go ahead and have a look at our billboard here. And if we turn on the albedo map, it's likely that it'll uh, come on through and that doesn't seem right. I'll have to manually put the uh, put the billboards in there, I think. Turn it to not. Turn it to not. Let's see. Ranch. Branch cross. I see it there. I'll go ahead and try and load that in. Now I'm just a little apprehensive of running it, um, as this version of Unity um, has a tendency to crash anytime I try to run the game. Uh, so for the time being, I won't run it. <laughs> okay, it says it, oh, adjust. Okay, I'm not sure why that isn't working. So we may need to come back to that and have a look at that later, um, as it, it isn't showing up. And everything tells me that it should be showing up, so that's fine, that's fine. So we have our willow trees here. So this, this tree will be scattered all around uh, this particular environment. I'll, in general, I'll mostly restrict them to this area, and maybe I'll pick a spot here. Um, yeah, I'll call that like a, just like a little, um, a little cove. How about we'll take that, select that, I'll press Control D. And what I should do as well on my scatter managers, uh, I need to change the names on the scatter managers so I know that they're scattering the willows. I'll add a gizmo icon so I can pick them out and I can tell what they are pretty easily. So I'll go ahead and put some uh, willows here as well. I'll just call this like a willow cove. How about that? Willow cove. I mean, it's not, you know, like not necessarily it's like a little, but I'm just going to call it a cove anyway. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll just start designating. Oh, right. I do know what I want to set up as well here. So, any sand uh, or any terrain that's underwater, I've set up a new uh, terrain layer here that uh, is a modified sand that looks darker uh, and more wet. So what I'm going to do right now is just disable... Oh, no, I don't want to disable this guy. Um, This one's like a template material. I don't really want to adjust the transparency on this guy. Uh, let's see here. Deep color. Yeah, I've already got one that's set up. I don't want to muck around with this one too much, so... our terrain here and have a look at this. So I, I set up a new base layer for that. It says texture wrap mode must be set to repeat. I better fix that up. Quick smart. Okay. So let's go ahead and try and fix that up. So that would be this guy here. You try and fix that. Oh, he's set to a sprite. That's the problem. Okay. He doesn't want to be a sprite. He wants to be default texture. Anyway, uh, Microsplats will handle handle that stuff anyway. I generally try to crunch these and um, 
But right now it doesn't super matter, and we just want to get that to repeat. There we go. Go ahead and apply, and I think we need to regenerate our micro splat asset. So we'll go ahead and scroll down. to finish doing all the magic work for us, all the processing, uh, packaging the materials for us, and then we can start painting with that new texture that I've set up, which is a darker sand that's meant to look quite wet. I do want to have some rocks under the water as well, so we'll paint those in too. Okay, should only be a few more seconds. While we're waiting, we can have a sip of our coffee. Okay. Hey, if you'd like to pick up your own Maverick D Moose mug, uh, everything is on sale right now at the Sun Grand Shop. So even the whole jacket, 20% off. Everything's 20% off until the end of the year. Uh, we have these new uh, Soul Type badges, so you can let people know if you're the brave type, if you're lonely, uh, strong, whimsical, wistful even. Sometimes I think I'm probably the wistful Soul Type. <laughs> Alright, we. Everything's on sale. You can grab your mugs, your t-shirts, whatever you lose. Anyway, they'll be on sale until the end of the year. Okay, let's see if... Um, oh, it's still crunching our... Still crunching our textures here. Crunching is my... Uh, generally, I'll try to crunch anything that I can um, in terms of materials uh, for your texture compression. It just means that your uh, file sizes uh, will be significantly smaller. So, that's about it. But you do have to wait um, longer during development uh, for the engine to crunch your textures for you as it is doing uh, some significant work to compress those and get them a smaller size in memory. Okay, it should be done in just a second here. And uh, I will do an episode prelude. Uh, I'll have to open up my episode prelude later on, find the pond material that I've set up, and or, yeah, the pond material, and then bring that in so that um, it has that ideal pond look that's quite, uh, you know, uh, shallow and you can see through to the bottom and it's sort of a nice, clear, clean, bright color. Not too many ripples. So we'll get to that. It's uh, almost ready now. Okay. Go ahead and click on our terrain. And now we can paint our ground here. So what I'll do is actually turn up my opacity, my brush size. I'll bring that up. I just want to have a look and see what it looks like here. Okay, so you can see that the tiling is not right yet. We want to adjust the tiling, and also I just want to make sure it is wet. It's real, real wet. Okay, so go back to our Lyco splat material. Go to our config. looking good. All right, we'll go for texture. Okay, we'll switch over to our next guy. Okay, that's our sand. So you can see that our tiling is 12. I think it needs to be about 200. Okay, now let's see. Well, that says 100 there for the base sand. I'll flip that to 100. Yeah, yeah, that looks like it. That looks all right. So you can see it has a very uh, wet look to the sand. Uh, let's see, it's quite splotchy. It, it sort of splotches through there. And, uh, let's see. Okay, uh, what I might do is just make it a little, a little shinier here. nice and wet, doesn't it? We just need the sand to look wetter than the normal sand. Um, maybe just a little bit more. Oh, I can't use 
use the up and down buttons on that. Okay. Okay, yeah, okay, so as you can see as the light hits it, it is visibly more wet looking than the normal, normal sand that we have there. So, okay, what I'm going to do now is paint all around my bodies of water. So I'll do that, and then I think we'll, we'll wrap up for this video. So I can't actually see underneath. I'm just going to use the force here. I'll, I'll look with my heart and not my eyes. How about that? Okay. I just want a little bit of border. We'll fix that. That, that. that wet spot there, we'll fix it. Don't worry about that. We'll fix it up. Okay. And that's looking pretty good. Okay. That way, any ground uh, that is underneath will also look uh, like water has soaked into the ground and it has saturated it with water. Okay, that looks to have a more natural look to it, doesn't it? Yeah. And what I might do, I'm just uh, thinking about this, I'm thinking I might have, um, instead of having that height really, really um, sharp blending with the height, I might see if I can soften that at all. Let me see. Let's see height uh, contrast. I'm going to you know, let's see. Unfortunately, I think. Let's see if I thought that's not going to help us though. That's not going to give me what I want. So, I've turned down the height contrast for that, but uh, well, that's about it. That's all right. That's good enough. Okay. So yeah, you can see that's where we are right now. So uh, I'll go ahead and this little area here as well. And probably in the next video, uh, in part four, you'll see that the bodies of water will look different as I'll go to the episode prelude project now and I'll grab the uh, material that I've already set up there for the, the uh, pond. Okay, grab this. And that's looking a-okay. Well, that's it for part three. I'll go ahead and take a short break and I'll see you next time in part four. Thanks very much for watching. Take care of yourselves and be safe this holiday season. Spend time with your friends and family and uh, be safe out there. Take care. We'll see you all again soon.